My ex-wife indeed tried to reach me through my parents. My parents told me that she called them crying and threatened to off herself. She said to them that she's tried everything to get in touch with me and how it broke her heart when I didn't say a word to her at our hearings. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. What's going on, everybody? Hope everybody's feeling good. Hope everybody's doing well. We are back with an update, an update story from a story I've been doing on here. Um, I read it, uh, I think, the first time in June? Or was it May? I don't know. Sometime in the summer. But uh, he sent in some other parts, you know, detailing what's been going on. But this is the story, if you don't remember. This is the same story. Where this guy, he lived in Alabama, had, was having a good life, according to him. I remember he was living with his uncle. Oh, no, no, no. He was living with, he was living in one of his uncle's properties. Him and his wife were saving up to buy a home. They were waiting to have kids. He had a great job. Uh, he had went to college. They both went to college. Did We're doing pretty well. We're doing good. Everything seemed good out there. His wife wanted to move to some big city. He wasn't specific on which city they moved to, but they wanted to move to some big city uh, or she wanted to, she wanted to move to some big city. He wasn't with it. She enticed him with this job offer that her friend, it was supposed to be mutual friends. He knew this guy as well. And they all knew each other in college, but she seemed to be more friends with him, which is a red flag. Don't ever do that guys. This guy, the mutual friend helped OP get a job in this new city and it's paying him very, very well. This guy is doing very well for himself. A lot of, he talked to people at his job, family, and he went for it and he got the job and he moved with his wife. He thought everything was going to be great until his wife told him that he's boring. She wants to spice up the marriage. Ugh. Typical. What's going on with these women? She wanted an open marriage, guys. He wasn't having it. Immediately, he told her, We're done. I'm getting a divorce. I'm done with you. If you have not heard this story, you have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm gonna play it first. Listen to the story, and then it'll then it'll go straight to the update I'm about to read now. If you already know, you've heard it, you want to know what this guy's been up to, what's been going on, go down to the description, click the last part, latest part, and that'll be the update that I'm about to read right now. But you guys read the title? Let's get into it. Wife had the nerve to ask for open marriage. Back to Alabama I go, and I'm filing for divorce. Ugh. Yeah, starting off. Ugh, I love it. All right. Uh, wife had the nerve to ask for open marriage. Back to Alabama I go. I'm filing for divorce. Hey, True. I love what you've done on your channel. Please keep my name and email anonymous. No problem. No problem. No problem. I never will shout out you guys' name or your emails if you don't. If you don't specifically tell me to. If you say, hey, shout me out and. Promote this and show me, show me that I will, but yeah. Um, please keep my name and email anonymous. I started listening to your content recently and I found you after searching Google about open marriages. Hmm. Interesting. I didn't search for an open marriage because that's something I'm interested in at all. But one and a half years after my soon to be ex-wife and I moved to this frustrating busy city because she thought I should take the life changing salary offer, her words, not mine. She was asking for an open marriage. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm doing the same type of work, but I miss country living and I miss my family. My income back home wasn't bad at all. 
It certainly wasn't over six figures like it is now. But it was great. We don't have any children, thankfully. But I have always wanted to be a father. I worked hard in life. I went to college in my hometown, earned a master's degree, and landed a great job after. Blue. My wife and I met at college. We are both from the same area, but from the day I met her, she always talked about living in a big city like LA or New York. Besides that, we got along so darn well. I just never cared to live like this. I always wanted land, hunting, fishing, etc. Even though she is into that as well, well, the fishing part, she always felt she wanted to experience the fast life. Her words again. Before I, before I married her, the plan was to buy land and live just like that. We didn't buy right after marriage. We stayed in my uncle's rental for a couple years saving up. At this time, we both were working and collectively, we made a great income together. One evening, I come home and she's super excited telling me she has great news. I freaking thought she was pregnant, even though we were trying to be careful with doing so because we didn't want to start having kids until we purchased our own home. She says, I found a great job for you. I was thrown off a bit. I love the company I worked for and she knew that. I had become a manager, team lead in my division after my first year there. I couldn't understand why she'd say this. She told me that her friend from college landed a job in this city I'm currently living in now. I know this guy, he's actually pretty cool, but he landed this job after we all graduated and he's doing phenomenal. I see the things he posts on Facebook and she showed me pics on Instagram. He's doing very well. He told my wife that he could get me a job at the company he's working for. Major well-known company too. I had no interest in leaving my job, plus the money I made was great. Well, at least I thought. She told me what he makes a year, and I will say it was more than both our salaries combined. Even though I was impressed, I still was not interested. Her begging went on for weeks. The whole, why don't you want to live? You only live once. I thought we made decisions together. I hate it here, blah, blah, yada, yada. I ended up speaking with some friends about it. And to make a long conversation short, they were saying, man, if it doesn't work out, you can always come back. And if it's solely about the money for her, then see if your company could match it. I knew there was no way they were going to pay me what I could be making in this big city. I was set on not going for it. But one day, I was at work. Typical day, getting things done and having a great conversation with my team. I had lunch with a couple of the project managers there to discuss some work-related thing. Both these guys are a lot older than me. Very wise men that I respect and remind me of the men in my family. Very hardworking and respected men. We got on the topic of retirement and talked about how young people today may have a tough time in retirement due to, due to many not putting enough into their 401ks and retirement accounts. I was asking them if they will be happy once they retire and will they have enough money. Both said they will more than likely work past retirement age as long as they can. I asked if they have any regrets in life or wish they did things differently. Both said that they should have waited for marriage and kids. One is currently still married and the other is divorced. That their main focus was to provide for their families and make sure their kids had a wonderful life and become the best they could be. Understandable. Both also said it would have been nice to leave our hometown because they feel like they've been stuck. All of their kids left our town and seemed very happy. We talked about a lot more, but I will say the rest of the day, I couldn't stop thinking about our conversation. I had no regrets on getting married and knew I was doing the right thing by waiting to have children. But I thought, I don't want to be in my 50s and have regrets. I started thinking more and more about moving and possibly working at the other company. 
Maybe if I made that type of money, I could load up my retirement account and still be able to do more in life. About a week went by and it's weighing on me more and more. My wife brings it up again over dinner. I look at her and say, no, even though I was leaning towards yes at this time. Later that night in bed, I bring it back up and I ask her if we were to make the move, what she's going to do as far as work. And she says there are a ton of jobs for her there and she will not have trouble getting a job. After a few minutes of silence, I said, you know what? F it. Let's do it. Let's effing do it. She was so happy her face lit up. I asked her, what about your job though? Oh, you are simply just going to drop it if I get this position? She says, F my job. I'm not worried about that. We made love and fell asleep. I spoke with our friend about the opportunity and he had me pass along my resume to him. I eventually had a phone interview with their HR, then a video interview with members on the team. One woman in the interview kept complimenting my southern accent. They were impressed with me and thought I'd be a great fit for the team. Even though my wife's friend told me the salary to ask for when it came up, I was still super nervous when saying that was my salary requirement because I still couldn't believe I could make that much money. A week after that phone interview, I got an email from their HR. And sure enough, they offered me exactly what I was asking for, plus they paid for the moving expenses. I couldn't believe this was really happening. The company helped with finding a place for my soon-to-be ex-wife and I. There were a few different options and I was not impressed. I did not miss living in a freaking dorm room. The sizes of these apartments were ridiculously small, but they were all in good areas of the city. They were all one bedroom, one bath, and super expensive. I gave my company a two month notice, which they appreciated, and mostly everyone was happy for me and made me feel like I was making a good decision and I deserved it. We went up to look at the apartments plus some, other, plus some others in the other parts of the city. We settled on one of the suggested units. Went through the process of obtaining the place, got it, and was ready to pack up and move. The last day at my previous job was sad. My team was sad to lose me, but I was happy to train someone else on the team to take over my position. He deserved it, and it was, des and it was destined to happen for him eventually somewhere within that company. We didn't take much besides our clothes and day-to-day -day things we needed. Our friend who got me the job hooked us up with furniture. The apartment came with a stove and refrigerator. But once we got to what we'd call our new home, which was the tiniest closet of an apartment I've ever seen, I swear it was smaller than I remembered. I immediately started to feel regret. I just don't belong here. Our friend took us out the first night to a really nice restaurant. Food was great, but the busy life, loud city, it's just not me. By the way, she never got a job and her desire for kids became non-existent. She'd say, I don't have to work now. This is amazing. I'll care for the home. You mean closet, I'd say? Things went downhill. Now, the best thing about this move was the job. I truly do enjoy what I'm doing. And like I said, pay is great. Company events are great. I've met amazing people. The networking and connections are everything. Everyone is married in this industry, it seems. Mainly everyone at this new company is married and the other execs and salespeople I meet during events are all married. Everyone brings their wives or husbands to company events. One night at a company events, my soon to be ex-wife had a few too many drinks and was being a bit embarrassing and suggested we go to the bathroom to have sex. I'm not some prude or anything, but no, I wasn't up for it. She got upset during the event and said, you're so boring. You never want to have fun. We ended up leaving a bit earlier than others from my company. And I will say it bothered me when she called me boring. I remember a park we went to before, so I drove us there. Found a nook kinda hidden, parked, and we had sex. It was great. She was happy, I was happy. I just wanted to win my ego back. She really shot it down when she called me boring for turning down sex. So I thought, you know what, screw it. 
I'll show her. That next morning, I was getting ready to do a Teams meeting on a Saturday morning. I went to the kitchen to grab my coffee and gave my soon-to-be ex-wife a kiss. Walking away, she says, I have to ask you something. I had about 10 minutes until I needed to log on, so I said, what's up? My soon-to-be ex-wife suggested an open marriage. Just like that. We should explore an open marriage. She said, we're young and we should have more fun. I'm going to be completely honest. When she said those words to me, let's just say I wanted to raise my hand. I just wanted to smack whatever evil entity that entered her out of her. I didn't think our sex life was bad. Do we have sex every day? No, but often enough. We both flirt throughout the day via text or even when we're out or just on the couch watching Netflix. When I asked if I was enough for her sexually, she said, of course, silly. I said, what's the problem? Her reply was, it can always be better. I was ready to flip the heck out. Man, my ego was shot down again. Who the heck wants to hear that they aren't pleasing their wife? I still don't know where she got this idea from. When I'd work, she was mostly home, if, if not home, out shopping or grabbing food. By the way, guys, she's a TikToker. She always had her camera out vlogging stuff. She's done it for years. I remember a couple years ago, her being super excited getting millions of views on a makeup video. I never was into that TikTok or Snapchat stuff. She gets a lot of views, but she doesn't bring in a lot of money doing it. It's more so a hobby, I guess. I, of course, told her no to the open marriage idea and told her how, and told her how sick I am of this crap. You keep telling me I'm boring. Now you want an open marriage. Are you effing serious? Please tell me you're joking. She says, I just want to live and experience life. With you, of course. We can set rules and do it the way we want to do it. At least just think about it. I walk away and attend my meeting. After the meeting, I snapped on her. I told her she is out of line and I don't know what the heck's gotten into her. I ask, who the F is he? He says, he who? I'm not cheating on you. I said, if I find out someone has been here while I was away, you will be sorry. She proceeds to tell me I'm afraid to live and I want to be like our boring parent. She refuses to live like that and wants to experience life. I grabbed her phone out of her hand, just snatched it, and started looking through messages. You didn't try to grab it back and said, look all you want. I've never cheated on you and never will. I spent close to a half an hour looking through that phone. I found nothing. I saw her TikTok post. I never look at those. Bunch of makeup videos and, and putting on clothes. Some a little too racy for me. No signs of cheating though. I ask her what's gotten into you. He says, I just want us to have more fun and that there's a website for swinging couples and open marriage. I got so angry when I heard that open marriage crap again. And I said, I refuse to live like this and we're going back home. This is only a year and a half after moving here and starting the new job. I told her we're going back home to where we belong. Her response was, I'm not going anywhere. You don't own me. I left to clear my head and headed down to a local restaurant and had breakfast. I made up my mind during breakfast. We're getting a divorce. When I go back, she was on her phone recording a video in the kitchen. I knew she was because when I walked in, she looked at me as if I'm disturbing her video by making noise opening and shutting the door. I head to the room and pack a bag. The following Monday, I spoke with HR at the job, a lawyer back home, and my buddy, back home also. I can admit I didn't think a lot of stuff through thoroughly, but I got a rental car, packed some things, and got the F out of there. I wanted out, and that's what I did. When I spoke to HR, I just simply requested time off, but I have no intentions on working in this city. I was given a week of PTO, with no issue, and if I needed more, I could go through my vacation days. I didn't tell anyone at the company what I was actually going through. I just said I was having some family issues back home that needs my time. My soon-to-be ex-wife was asking me if I had to travel for work. 
because I didn't head out to work that morning. I went to that same restaurant and had coffee. I talked to HR lawyer and my friend back home while I was there. From time to time, I head to nearby cities and states sometimes just for that day or a couple days. She figured I had to do so since I didn't head into work that morning. I looked at her after grabbing my backpack and simply said, yeah, and I left. When I did speak to the lawyer, he was asking if adultery was involved. If so, do I have proof? And when I told him why I wanted a divorce, he started talking about having to stay together for at least six months in some counseling bullcrap. I haven't called him back like I said I would yet. I just want out of this marriage. She's not who I thought she was. At all. I don't want to pay her alimony. I'm glad we don't own a house or have kids together. I just want out. She did call me, asking if I was upset with her. She hopes we can work this out when I return home. I told her we are getting a divorce, and I hung up. He kept calling, then sent a text begging me not to divorce her. She's sorry she brought this up and let's forget all about it. And was asking when I was coming home. I replied, I'm heading home now, where I belong. We're done. She stopped calling eventually. My plan is to drive back to my hometown and figure it out. But I just need to be away from there. I feel so stupid. I hope to follow up when I get home. I'm currently still not back in Alabama yet. I wrote this in a hotel. I should have just taken a flight, but screw it. My thought was just to drive. I'm over halfway there anyway, so no issue. I'll get everything straightened when I make it back to where I belong. I appreciate what you do, and I will follow up with this email and let you know what has transpired. If anyone out there has any advice for me, that would be great. When you read my story, can you please let me know? I'm interested to see if you or anyone out there can give me some kind of advice on divorce process. My intentions right now are to get a lawyer, talk to my family about everything, and take it from there. Take care. All right, so follow up. Follow up on wife asking for open marriage. I'm back in the city and still work in my new position. I'm glad to hear that. I was hoping you wouldn't quit that job because I'm thinking, man, he's getting paid really good money. Somehow he gets rid of his wife. Keep the high paying job, dude. Ball out and save and, and, and try to live below your means and all that. Oh man. But uh, he says, true, I want to thank you so much. When you replied to my email, I was flying back home and got the chance to listen to you read my story after. I must be honest, I cried listening. Wow. I just felt stupid. So many things I missed, and I never should have married her. But I listened to you read my story, and I listened to your comments also. I indeed did find a lawyer. We meet the residency requirements in this state, and I filed here. I'm currently back in this crappy city, in this closet of an apartment. <laughs> he did say that. All by myself. Turns out, and I'm sure you won't be surprised, that she indeed was cheating. Oh, oh I know where this is going. Oh. Just the simple fact that she is living with some other guy here that fast, that I've never known, tells me everything. Oh. She cooperated with my lawyer got herself a lawyer, and things are being handled. She doesn't want anything. She just wants the divorce as well. It was confusing because when I was back away, back home, we did speak, and she cried saying, she loves me and doesn't want to lose me. The conversation went like this. Me. I answer, yes, what do you want? Soon to be ex-wife. Oh my gosh, you answered. Baby, please come back home. Please, I'm so sorry. Me, we're done. I'm filing for divorce. It's over. Soon to be ex-wife. I swear I never cheated on you. Open marriage was just a thought that crossed my mind. Me, well, divorce crossed my mind the second you brought up open marriage and I'm going through with it. <laughs> then I hung up and she proceeded to text me over and over and eventually it stopped. 
I just couldn't and stressed to her that we are done and I'm moving forward with the divorce. I don't need to go through any emails or hire a PI. It was clear to me that she was cheating, especially now knowing she moved on so fast, living with some friend I knew nothing about. During that drive back home, I was thinking to myself, there's no way I'm quitting this awesome new job, and I'm glad I didn't. This is such a great opportunity for me, and I'm not throwing it away for her. During that week, I spoke with family. I needed that so much, and I'm going to start making more trips back home to visit. I truly miss my family. The lawyer I hired is awesome and has also felt like a friend to me. Yeah, I know he's getting paid, but talking with him has been very helpful in other ways. Our mutual friend who I work with, who got me my position, knows everything. He says he'll be there for me, and he has my back if I need anything. He apologized and couldn't believe she proposed an open marriage to me. He said he will always remain friends with her, and told me he knew nothing about her possibly cheating on me, ever. It honestly did cross my mind that him and my soon-to-be ex-wife were hooking up or something. He says no. He's never had any interest in her. I honestly don't believe him. Just a gut feeling. When I got back after that week, all her things were gone. I found out where she was living through him, our mutual friend. He told me that she says she had a friend here in this city. That guy is just helping her because she needs a place to stay. He said he offered my soon-to-be ex-wife to stay at his place, but she declined and said she had a place. That's where she is currently. Knowing this tells me she clearly was messing with someone else and probably had this all planned all along. The thought of her possibly bringing, a, bringing another man in here during times I was working really bothers me. I must admit, I did check out her TikTok just to see what she's been talking about. She's recently posted a video talking about how she's going through divorce and she actually cried talking about it. I want to send the link to you so bad so you could at least see, but I'm way too afraid to, to take that risk. But seeing her cry about it just angered me. She brought this on herself. I definitely have lost all love for her. She's just not the person I thought she was and was clearly covering up about herself. So, I am still going through with this divorce, but it shouldn't be too long. Six months could be, could be more, but my lawyer is saying six months for sure. I don't have to worry about any maintenance support, and we, don't have a, and we don't have assets to split. I saw someone say in the comments to go after her TikTok money. She may be hiding how much she's making. I doubt it, but honestly, I don't care anymore. I want her gone and to be done with her. She's agreeing to an amicable divorce, and I'm all for it. People in my division at work know what I'm going through now, and everyone is being very supportive. I love working for this place, even though I'm not the biggest fan of this city. As long as I'm working here, I think I can stick it out. Plus, soon enough, I'll be doing more traveling all over the states for work, so that's cool. I just want to continue gr growing in my career and being the best. I'm picking up basketball again at the local rec center. I played with some guys and it was great. One guy I played with moved here from Georgia for work. He's pretty cool and understands why I felt odd moving here because he did as well. He's been here for six years now. Anyway, I'm venting. Guess it, guess it feels good to write this out. Thanks for sharing my story. And I'll continue to stick around checking out other stories. Thanks. Wow. That all feels good, man. It, it would have been, been sad if you said, Well, I talked to her and she convinced me that she never cheated, so we're happy now. Nope. You said, I'm going through with this, this divorce. She called you crying. She gave. She tried to give it one last chance. One last chance. You said, no, we're going through with the divorce and she moves out to some other guy's place. The guy she probably was screwing. And dude, I'm like you, man. 
I'm not about to see if how long she's known this guy. Oh, she's been talking to him online, probably met him through social media, blah, blah. I don't care. I know that you're cheating now or you moved on to some guy I don't know with. You were possibly cheating. You asked me for an open marriage. No, I don't want to be with you anymore. You know, so I hear you when you say that, man. I'm not looking through for no PI or looking through no emails or I feel you, man. I'm glad you you sound like you picked up a hobby. You know, you're back at work. Thank God you didn't lose your job. Oh, man. Oh, I'm so glad. I, guys, do not let a woman knock you off your square ever, ever. Just what if this guy just threw threw that job away? Throw away his career. And he's left not working anywhere. Just threw his, threw his professional career away. That would have been devastating for a woman that cheated on him. That never loved him in the first place. True, you have a lot of intelligent guys that follow you. I'm still going through the divorce. But you were right. A lot of your commenters said that she would try to come back to me and that she did. Wow. She actually. <laughs> I have been no contact this entire time. But she is using our mutual friend. I really don't like saying mutual friend. More so her friend. We just work together now. But she used him to get to me. He and I were actually at a bar after work. And he tells me that there's someone that who needs to talk to me. I ask who? And he tells me, please don't hate me for this, but it was my ex-wife. He said that she wants to speak to me. I said, heck no. My lawyer advised me not to speak to her. We don't have children. There's just no need. He said, she's hurting, man, and just wants to talk to you briefly. I said, what, are you going to call her or something? Because I have her blocked on everything. He tells me she just arrived outside. I said, what the heck? So you set me up. This was supposed to be a celebration of a big deal we helped close for the company. He apologized again and said, it's been hard seeing her like this. He went outside. He was gone for more than 10 minutes. When he came back in, I saw my soon-to-be ex-wife. She clearly was just crying. Face red and everything. They come, they came to where I was sitting, and her head is hanging down, like she's so ashamed and embarrassed. She looks up at me, beginning to cry again, and says, I missed you so much. What happened to us? I'm a bit tipsy, and I stared at her and spoke. Are you effing serious? You wanted an open marriage, happened. You cheating, happened. Should I continue? She says, what? I never cheated on you ever. I said, so you moved on pretty effing quick. You're living with some male friend whom I never even known about. She looks at our mutual friend ticked off as if to say, I can't believe you told him. She says, I met him online and he was just helping me out because I had nowhere to stay. I said, online where? Soon to be ex-wife. Uh, uh, TikTok. Me, you met him on TikTok? So he makes content like you or something? How'd you two become friends? Soon to be ex-wife. Yes, he watches my videos and told me he loved my content. And we just would talk occasionally. Me, so he enjoys makeup tutorials. Soon to be ex-wife. Uh, yeah. Me, is he gay? Soon to be ex-wife. No, not at all. Me, did you F him? And be honest. Soon to be ex-wife. Complete silence. Me, huh? Did you F him? Soon to be ex-wife starts crying. Hun, I'm sorry. Let's forget all about this. Me, we are done. I'm about to leave. I headed out and put in my, and put in for my Uber. She and her friend never came out. I left and vowed to never speak to her again. I have had a lot of off-the-record deep conversations with my lawyer. He's been divorced for 11 years and says he will advise any man never to get married.
I told him, let's say every man decides to never marry. Then wouldn't that hurt your business? He says, I'll just practice a different type of law. His wife cheated on him with his own co-worker, another lawyer. They had a year-long affair behind his back. My lawyer said he tried to get that man disbarred, but he didn't succeed. He did sue the man and won. He sued his co-worker under something called criminal com- criminal conversation. I think it's the same as alienation of affection. I didn't ask. But after he divorced his wife and sued his co-worker, he took the bar here and and left North Carolina, where he was born and raised. He said he couldn't stand to be there anymore and needed some place new. He advised me to remain no contact with my soon-to-be ex-wife because he almost made the mistake of going back to his. After he divorced her, she was alone and claimed she'd do any she'd do anything to win his love back. She was homeless and was living with a family member. He said he almost did and was actually planning on going back down to North Carolina to get with her. But but when he woke up that morning, he was supposed to go see her. He had an epiphany, then started realizing how that woman betrayed him, and thought about how dumb it would have been to take her back, only for her to do it again. He said that after he caught her, He allowed himself to gain 80 pounds after catching her cheating and feeling insecure. It made him want to run back to her. Luckily, he didn't. He ended up hitting the gym and focusing on making himself better. He eventually found someone else here, but he says he'll never marry or live with another woman. But their relationship is great and he's a happy man today, he says. I didn't tell him I broke the no contact rule. I didn't reach out to her, but still, when I knew she was coming to the bar, I should have snuck out the back or something or just simply left and walked right past her. Yeah, you should have did that. A lot of your commenters warned me that she will try to crawl back. Her not answering my questions about if she'd slept with the guy tells me what I already knew. I don't care if she didn't sleep with him before. I filed for divorce. I'm sure she's at least thought about it. Either way, I was going to continue with the divorce anyway. I just wanted to know. I have been snooping on her TikTok and she hasn't posted since the last post talking about getting a divorce. Maybe she is distraught and regrets what she did. Oh well, not my problem. She made her bed. Now she has to lie in it. I have to also tell you guys that I met a woman at the breakfast spot I usually go to on the weekend. Very pretty girl. I used to notice her before, but never talked to her. She's at a local college studying arts and performance. She knows all about my situation. Sometimes you just need someone to talk to. Anyway, we do have sex. No, I have no plans on getting into a relationship as she respects and doesn't want to either. But she has been coming to my apartments a few times a week. I guess ideally it would be better to abstain, maybe, but I don't know. I wanted it. She wanted it. And we're just two consenting adults enjoying each other's company. It doesn't help that she is extraordinarily beautiful. But as of now, we are just friends and I truly never want to marry again after after my divorce. Who knows if I'd ever get into a relationship again. But living with a woman or marriage is an absolute no for me. I recently closed a big deal here with the company I work for. Man, I am truly good at this. I guess things just happen for a reason. I love the new position I have. I'll be much happier once I'm divorced, though. I'll keep you posted. And maybe you could throw a YouTube party for me to celebrate my divorce. Thanks. All right. Final part. (laughs) <laughs> Final update. Okay. Well, hello, Mr. True Story. I'm officially a single man. The divorce is finalized. She is out of my life for good. Thank God. <laughs> man. Okay. Okay. I'm happy for you. I'm happy for you. 
My ex-wife must have told our mutual friend about it being finalized because he stopped at my desk that that day saying, well, it's all done, huh? I looked at him and he said, the divorce, it's finalized. It's official, man. I said, yeah, it is. And put my focus back towards what I was working on at my computer. I think he's gotten the hint that I really don't see him as a friend and would prefer to just keep our relationship work based. I've turned down his, hey, want to grab a drink? Every time since that incident happened at the bar. Oh yeah, I remember that. Where he pulled that little stunt to hook me and my ex-wife back up. I just don't trust him and I never believed him when he said they never slept together. My ex-wife indeed tried to reach me through my parents. My parents told me that she called them crying and threatened to off herself. She said to them that she's tried everything to get in touch with me and how it broke her heart when I didn't say a word to her at our hearings. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I stayed no contact and made sure she couldn't contact me. My parents refused to get her in contact with me. After that night at the bar, I vowed to be sure I never speak to her again and I have not visited her TikTok page again. I read in the comments that some guy said I was some simp still because of my friendship and sexual relationship I have with a girl here who works at the restaurant I go to on the weekends. Hey, if continuing to, if continuing to have mutual sex with a woman I find attractive makes me a simp, then darn it, I'm a simp. I really don't care too much what someone thinks about that. I'm not marrying the woman, and I always use protection. Her and I are cool, and it's been great to have someone to talk to. I met a few new buddies, one I spoke about in another email I sent you. I hang out and play ball with them on the weekends if I'm not, if I'm not out of town. I'm still kicking butt here, man. I'm saving a lot of money, and I'm doing pretty well. This place is turning out to be pretty great. My family back home in Alabama does miss me, but they're all very proud of me. My mom called me every single day. She said it hurt her that she was not with me while going through this process, but I assured her I was fine. Crazy how all this played out, man. I never wanted to... I never wanted to move here, but it all just worked out. I'm so happy. My lawyer and I are pretty cool too. We really built a connection, a friendship. Like I said, he went through the same thing that I went through. and He had it pretty rough, but he's good now. I do not feel bad about my ex-wife. I'm not going to go looking for her, trying to help her get some help because she's threatening to off herself. That's her problem. Not mine. Whoever that guy was she moved in with, she can get help from him. He won't get any from me. As far as our mutual friend, I'm going to keep it work-based. We work together. Sometimes we work on projects together. Sometimes we travel together. But he won't know any of my personal information. Ever. Because all he'll do is relate to her. I'm pretty sure he's still cool with her. And if she tries to get him to get me to meet up with her again, he will try. I want to thank you for sharing my story. You're a great man. Take care, sir. Wow. <laughs> See, this, that's, that's the endings I love to hear, man. You're doing good. I take it she didn't get anything out of you. I think I remember in one of the stories, in one of the emails you sent, she was she was let she was allowing it to be an easy divorce. She wasn't coming after you for nothing. And wow. Dang, dude. I'm glad you made it out of that situation because uh it could have gotten ugly. I think a lot of people in the comments were thinking, like, oh, this dude might might be screwed. It seems like you won, man. You won. You got a great job. You're saving your money. You live in a new city, you're meeting new friends, you're having a good time. And hey, I hear you out when you say, um, you said some guys called you a simp. 
for uh, having relations with some girl. I do remember that in one of the updates. You said the girl, the girl that works at the restaurant, you were still dealing with her or you were dealing with her. And you guys were hooking up and you hang out sometimes. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, if that makes you a simp, then hey, it, I guess it is too. You know, I don't believe in marriage or relationships. I still hang out though. I mean, if that makes you a simp, I guess. <laughs> All right. So we're, we're simps, <laughs> you know, um, I don't know, but I think, I think maybe some people probably were saying like, maybe you should focus on yourself. Maybe that's what it is. I don't know. But, um, it sounds like you are focusing on yourself, you know, and I'm glad you have no intentions of making this girl, your girlfriend or your wife. You're not thinking like that. Good. Cause, uh, then I would call you crazy. I I was, I would just say like, are you sure you want to do that? But man, keep stacking up the money. Hopefully this mutual friend doesn't try to sabotage your career because he's mad because you don't want to be cool with him anymore. Hopefully he just gets the hint and he moves on and and lives his life and be friends with your ex-wife if he wants to. Who cares? Screw that. I'm glad you're doing well, man. Keep doing you. Keep stacking up that money. And, you know, and just in case this guy tries to sabotage your job, keep stacking up that money just in case one day you have to move back to Alabama. Or maybe that's the plan. You're just going to stack up and go move to Alabama. Who knows? You know, but I like the stacking of the money. Smart man, especially today. The way things are, things are unpredictable. Don't go splurging and blowing money. Nah. I'm pretty sure the company is paying for trips, paying for the work trips, you know, and it's all reimbursed. So salute to you, man. I'm happy for you. I'm proud of you, sir. Guys, let me know what you think about this story. Did you enjoy this story? Let me know. Let him know in the comments. He seems to read the comments. I'm going to catch you guys at the next one.